Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and this is going to be part two of this uh, Honda GCV 160 Craftsman repair and uh, I think what I'm going to do today is uh, we're going to remove the, the uh, drive mechanism, the transmission here and uh, let's dig in and see what's actually wrong with it. Uh, I did find some wheels for the front uh, relatively cheap, $25 for two of them and they are black so they're going to match the uh, the tires in the back. Uh, I'm not in a great hurry for this because it is still winter and I do have other lawnmowers. You know, I might sell this. Not really sure what I'll do with it yet. But uh, we're going to dig into the transmission today. Uh, so stick around and uh, let's get involved. So in part one, I had uh, I got the engine running, and I had freed up the cables and uh, lubricated everything, and it's in really great shape. You can see the front of it. I mean, there's no rust on the motor. Um, the blade is in real good shape. Uh, it's almost like brand new. But today we're going to get into this transmission because it's curious. I'm curious to see what is going on with it. Maybe it can be fixed. Uh, usually there's a worm gear inside of it. Uh, there are some uh, bearings here and there are, there is some play so I suspect that's why it uh, damaged the wheels. They shouldn't have any play in it. You know, but if the cost of the bearings and maybe something inside the transmission can be replaced fairly cheaply uh, maybe we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, just because something isn't working doesn't mean the whole thing is shot. There might be something in there, a gear we can replace. But we're going to get into it and uh, first we have to remove the the metal gears here and there is a C-clamp here that we're going to pop out on each side. And then underneath we have uh, two 7 16 uh, bolts underneath in the front to remove this uh, this assembly here. And then we'll pop it out and uh, take it inside and inspect it and see what's going on with it. Alright, so we have our gear here and we have a, kind of like a C-clamp in there. And I'm going to try to pop that C-clamp out of there um, as easy as possible without it flying all over the place. So I'm just going to take a screwdriver and try to tap it. If that doesn't work, I think I have another idea that might work actually better. Yeah, that's a little tough. Now I did spray these. I don't have any special tool to remove this, but I do have I think a pair of needle nose will work well. I can spread the the needle nose pliers apart enough where it makes contact with the ends of the, the C clamp and maybe get a hammer and just tap that out. But I did spray these last night just so it would be a little bit easier. Uh, so let me grab those and we'll we'll try that approach. Because the screwdriver really won't work because it's just gonna push and turn it around. We need to have uh, something on the ends of both of those at the same time. So let me grab those. So we have them here. Let's see what luck we can get with this. If I can get it on the end there. Yeah, that definitely worked. 
it's almost out of there. Might have to give it a few more taps here. Keep an eye where it goes so it doesn't go flying. Alright, we have one of them here. You can see that. There's one of the C clamps, so we'll set that aside. And there's our gear. We're going to have to do this to the other side, and there's a pin in here. We're just going to pop this pin out. If it doesn't go one way, it'll come the other way. never easy. Let me try the end of this socket extension. Maybe I can have to get some just some vice grips lightly on the end here just to hold it steady so I can try to get that pin out. It's being stubborn, but we'll get it. I was pounding on this and what had happened because the because of the bearing wore a little groove into this pin. I had to turn the pin slightly and pull it. I was just pulling at it with the needle nose. And so we did we do have the pin out here. But it, it does have some groove marks in it. So that's the reason it was hard to get out at first. We'll set this aside and put the pin with the gear. And uh, we're going to work underneath here with this 7 16 socket and get these two bolts off from underneath if we can. Yeah, that's tough. tight in there. I'm just trying to get it with this. You can, you can always use an open end wrench or something like that. But I think we got it. The one on the left is a little more difficult. Because you have that transmission in the way there. We could just use it as a regular push mower if we want to. All right, so we have that off of there. And to replace that, uh, you'd have to remove this uh, snap ring here. 
That's if you wanted to replace the bearing. Now you can see it's just that's just super loose in there. So it definitely would need bearings, which is probably what caused the the uneven turning of it to damage the inside uh, plastic gears on the wheel on the wheels there. So we're definitely looking at. Uh, I think I saw these online. They weren't that much for just the uh, for just the bearings. So we're into some bearings so far. So I've removed the right side, and as you can see, there isn't even a bearing there. Here's the parts that came out. It's, there's multiple parts. It's just broke. It was just broke all apart. So that that explains the reason why the wheels, for sure, were worn down. Um, so we're gonna get a price on two new bearings here. Uh, we're gonna move on to the next step. I've removed the two bolts on each side, on, on the front underside, and this mechanism is now loose. There are some springs here. Just take note of, you know, how the springs go in. Uh, you know, I use pictures, and I have the videos. I do that too. Uh, for that reason, because then I can look back and, uh, you know, because when you're working on many different things, you might take something apart and get back to it a month later. So it helps to have some kind of record or drawing of where things go. Of course, you can always look at the service manual if you can find it. Uh, but we're going to put this away with the other parts for now. And I'm going to take this quarter inch socket and I'm just going to remove this pulley. Now basically how this system works is you have the uh, coming out of the shaft on the bottom of the motor before the blade would be a pulley similar to this and the belt kind of just sits there and when you pull the cable it's pulling this gear forward and by doing that the belt comes in contact with this pulley and it turns the wheels through this gearbox here. Now it is not turning anything here. I suspect there's an issue with a worm gear or some kind of gear inside of here, but we're going to open it up. Uh, but to release this so you can remove it, we have to take these two small little screws out or bolts here. So there's one. I'm just curious to see what's on the inside of this. You know, it might be repairable. I don't see any grease leaking out of the ends of it, and other parts of it seem okay. You know, it could be something mechanical in there. So I'm going to take off. You can see the belt guide here. I've removed that. So now the belt can be released. I'll just kind of set that off to the side for now. Set that off. I'll put my bracket with the other part. Now these screws or bolts here, I'm going to put back in there just so I know. So I don't lose them and I know where they go. Alright, so we're almost ready here. I have a spring on the top here. I'm going to have to pull out of here. like just the one spring and then your cable here transmission here and the cable basically just hooked into here 
I don't know if you can see that. There's a hole here, it just basically hooks into there. So we'll leave that spring there. There is another spring here. And uh, we're going to get this thing inside here. It looks like a star, a Torx screwdriver possibly to get them off of there. So we have it on the table here, the transmission. And I did clean up the shaft um, in the garage with the uh, wire wheel. And it looks, looks great. Looks pretty clean now. We're going to open up. I have a Torx driver here. I'm not sure what size it is. It's one that's pretty common. I use it for the car as well. Um, we're going to open this housing up here and see what's going on inside this transmission. Alright, so we have our transmission here from the lawnmower and we have uh, there was a bunch of uh, sealant around the outside of this. It took quite a bit of time to clean it all up uh, and there was some on this gear. This is the worm gear here and uh, that's metal and then you have a bearing inside. Okay, and then we have uh, a plastic gear here and that comes in contact with the worm gear and this kind of interlocking piece here you can see how it works so it's only designed to lock in one way here that's also plastic and uh, I took this out on the wire wheel and cleaned it up had some rust on it, it was all rust so that looks brand new now there are a few holes here on the end which are going to be for the uh, the gears that power the wheels and there's a hole here and there's a pin that pin will go inside there and I don't know if you can see that there's a slot in there and that pin sits in there and kinda keeps it uh, stable so I'm gonna stick this thing back together and we'll kinda show how it works it's pretty simple design really not too complicated we have two spacers here that go on the end and then some washers one on each side a metal washer so I think what I'm gonna do is get this together and then I'll seal put some grease in there there was some funky grease in there it was black it was took some time to clean that all up so it didn't really hurt to open this up and get it all cleaned up um, I'm gonna put put this together here we put these spacers in and I'm definitely gonna have to uh, reseal this box. I don't think I have to get too crazy. I'm going to be using grease. It's not going to have oil in it. Um, so, but first I want to get this uh, axle going through here. So I'm going to put the axle in there. I probably should do it actually on this. This is the outer housing. Do it on this one. So we have the spacer. Another spacer here. We're going to have this uh, 
gear here with a slight slant on it and uh, of course this interlocking plastic gear so first I'm going to set this it's going to go in this way because we have a hole here uh, that's going to have to hold the pin so we're going to feed it in this way Then I'm going to put the metal washer on. So we'll just kind of set this gear in here. We'll drop the pin in afterwards, and I'll show you that. I just want to get this thing in here so I can show you how it operates. So we'll get the washer on the other side, and the spacer. that looks good there. Now for the pin I think the easiest thing to do is kind of get it into position and kind of just slide this axle forward be a little tricky but the, the holes right there as long as you keep it lined up now I'm going to lift this out just a little bit so I can get this pin through here all right so we have the pin in there I wanted to show the basic operation I don't know if it recorded that or not but when the belt uh, which is connected to the shaft of your motor um, and you pull the handle this turns uh, this transmission unit and it engages it tightens it the belt to where it comes in contact with this uh, pulley here and it turns it and you can see the shaft turning uh, now when it's turned the opposite way, and I'd assume that's if you're backing up the mower, it wouldn't, this interlock, this, ge this uh, gear here will spin the opposite way, if you could see that functioning there. So it will not turn the shaft, but if it turns the other way, it engages the shaft. So that's the basic operation here of this transmission, nothing too fancy. I think what I'm going to do is take some uh, some black RTV and I'm going to put a, some grease in here. I'm going to grease these all up and then I'll put some black RTV. You know, I don't have to go crazy around the outside and seal this uh, housing up. And uh, I did order some bearings. Some new bearings are in. So I'm happy about that and the wheels are coming tomorrow. So we'll be able to also put the new bearings in, and I'm going to go through that, and uh, we'll get this thing going again. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, seal this up, put the screws back in, grease it up, and uh, we'll move on to the next step. All right, so let's get to the brass tacks here. Now here is the transmission that we've put back together. Now I did have this rod reversed so if you end up where this is really short at the end just reverse that rod around the other way so you're going to have to have a decent amount of it sticking out of uh, the right hand side there and we have our uh, our belt retainer bracket that we've cleaned up on the brush wheel we have our new uh, bearings here and here are the old ones uh, we have the two gears uh, there are two pins here that we're also going to need to secure those gears. Um, and we have our snap rings. Now I did uh, make a homemade pair of snap ring pliers on the grinder. I had these laying around. I think they were Harbor Freight. I had bought like, I don't know, I think it was like a pack of like eight of different pliers. And that worked out okay. Uh, Hopefully it won't be an issue putting them back on. Uh, so we have everything here. Let's mount it up 
and get to reassembling this thing. All right, so first we're going to start by putting the bearings back into the uh, these brackets here so we can mount them up on the side of the mower. So we'll get started with that. So we're going to put the bearing, you can see that, put the bearing inside like that. And we're going to try, attempt to put a snap ring in there. not looking forward to this. I was thinking maybe I could try to tap it on there. Or press it on there. Might need something like a piece of wood to set this on so it's because you have this axle for the wheel. I'd like to have it level. So let me grab a piece of wood here. That'll make our life much easier. So there's our piece of wood. Alright, so we finally got the snap rings on and I didn't bother videotaping the struggle because it took about about 30 minutes just to get these rings back on. Uh, so I do recommend a pair of snap ring pliers, however I didn't have any. So I just kind of made my own, but they're so small you don't get much leverage on it. And because uh, that doesn't lay flat, it's very hard to work with. So I just worked the ring on as far as I could while holding it with my foot and then I took a socket and this one is a 15 16 you know it's a good enough socket to fit so I could take a hammer and just smack it and snap it in so that did the trick so we're ready to move on with the next step we'll get these mounted in there uh, we'll put the axle in um, and yeah let's do it alright so we have our Axle in place here, and the next step is we're going to put in the this bracket here with the uh, bearing that we had just put in uh, with the snap ring pliers, and we're going to set it in here and line it up with the two holes. And then we'll put in our two nuts that we have. in the back side. It's probably easier with a like an open end wrench getting these, but I did do it with a small socket. We'll get those in there. And I'll snug them up later. Then we have these little pins here, and you'll notice there's some holes on the end. So we'll go ahead and put that pin in there. Might need a little tapping. And just kind of center it, and you're going to see on the gear you're going to have this opening in there. That's where the pin is going to sit in there. Now we can proceed putting that back on there. Kind of hold the transmission steady while I 
pound that on there and then we'll go ahead and put the C-clamp back in. We have some wheels coming, hopefully tomorrow. All right, there we go. So we have that one all set for the wheel. Uh, I think what we're going to do now is just tighten down the back side on this side. And then we can proceed to the other side. Now I'm not going to show the other side because it's basically the same thing. Um, and then we're going to put the belt retaining bracket on and we'll put the belt on. Um, yeah, and then we'll hope we're going to get the wheels hopefully tomorrow. And we can take care of that. Um, so overall it's going pretty good. I do need a mulching door uh, for the other side to get the door, but there's some other components. I thought it was going to come with a spring and a rod and the mount for the side. It didn't, so that's an additional probably $20 for all those little parts. So I can see why someone would get frustrated and throw something out, you know, because by the time you add up all the parts that the thing needs, you know, yeah, the engine's good. Uh, but all the mechanical stuff, you know, you're just talking more and more money as you go down the road. But overall, it's not too bad. You know, it's still going to be under 75 bucks uh, to repair it. And, you know, I maintain my stuff, so it'll last, it'll last a long time. Um, now, the cable I did connect in here, you kind of had to turn this transmission off to the side because the end of the spring where it connects has a curve to it. Um, I will, I'll pull the handle now and you can see it move forward. I don't have the springs in yet. There is a spring that goes on the top for tension and one on the bottom. I do have those. I'm going to put them in. Uh, just remember where you, you know, where you got them from. Pretty simple. There's just a couple. There's a hole uh, on the housing of the transmission. There's also a hole on this deck. So that would be the top spring, which I have here. Which I'll get that put on as soon as I uh, I get the other side back on. But overall it's going good. Uh, I'll do an update once I get all this done and I get the wheels in. Um, and then we'll start it up and see see how it goes. All right, so you can see we have the the gears on each side. Uh, we've placed the belt here, and this is the the retaining bracket. And we're gonna just put these two screws back in. That's for the belt there, and we've put the spring back in. There's a hole here, and then a hole on the transmission, and I believe there's another spring. Uh, on the bottom but there may not be I don't see one usually I'm good at putting things together and keeping things uh, and organized but there very well could be my recollection says that there was one on the bottom but maybe not uh, so the belts in place we have both sides done here and I'm just gonna mount that up and it's a small just a small socket one of the smaller ones and uh, you know we have the, sh the shoot door there that we're working on and uh, I oh, greased these up real good um, so I think what I'm gonna do now is just uh, quit for the day here mount this up and uh, our next step is when the wheels come and we'll put the wheels on and then we'll start it up and see how it works. So uh, 
we'll see you when the parts come. Alright, so we have the transmission uh, back together and installed. Uh, the new wheels came in, nice black looking wheels. Um, the back wheels had these kind of like a hub cap on the back, but one was missing. So when I took it off, it was just black underneath in the back. So I was able to find uh, from one place these black wheels. So that worked out nice. So the mower's in tip top. It's running great. We're going to start it up now and we're going to test out this transmission. And uh, yeah, so let's do it. So that's it, our journey on this Honda GCV160 Craftsman lawnmower is finally done and it, it wasn't too bad. I mean we did have some issues. Uh, you can see it has new front tires that look great. They match the black. You know I think it's kind of an awesome look with the black. Um, those tires, as I may have mentioned, had a hubcaps. They were white on them in the back and only one was there when I had found it so I removed it and I saw the black underneath and I said well that doesn't look too bad and I was able to find uh, some black wheels uh, on eBay um, which most of them are white so that was a nice find there um, we did change the oil uh, that's been changed uh, we put all the covers back on the drive mechanism uh, from the video as you've seen is has been re-greased and uh, reconditioned and uh, polished up on the wire brush uh, we did have uh, someone made a makeshift kind of uh, grass shoot which just kind of threw grass all over the place and I don't really like mowers that shoot the grass all over the place you know so the mulch this is a mulching blade on here it's a mulching mower so uh, what I did was order this this mulching cover and that was ten dollars for that and I expected that it would come with the mounting bracket and there's a spring and a rod so you can open it and of course it didn't uh, I looked up the prices for that stuff and you're looking at an extra twenty five dollars so thirty five dollars for a piece of plastic to cover a hole in the side of the mower seemed like a lot to me so uh, I don't plan on opening uh, the chute any of the lawnmowers I've had I've never opened it for any reason so I just put a bolt here and then a bolt up there and it's very stable it's not coming off at all uh, so that's all taken care of and I don't have to put any extra money into something that I found so overall it's been interesting the uh, to recap what was wrong with it the carburetor was just dirty uh, it was surging so we had cleaned the spark plug uh, we regapped the spark plug. Uh, we did the front bearings here. We also opened up the transmission and re-greased all of the gears inside of there. Uh, the belt is in pretty good shape. Uh, it works great so far. I haven't been able to test it. Won't be able to do that until the summer. Uh, but overall, it's like a brand new mower. And it's been quite an experience. And it's been a lot of fun, you know, tinkering around with stuff and making it work again. Uh, saving yourself money, it's what it's all about. If you like the channel, hit like, hit subscribe for future videos, and we'll see you next find. Mm -hmm.